Happy New Year everyone and welcome to 5.0.0 update on Auto Controller. Apologies on a huge delay as I was very busy on other projects but finally here we are. The first major update is I have rewritten a large amount of sections in the manual because the first video I made was pretty outdated at this point so I've included much more details including what hardware you need to buy and the entire process on how to get the programs working. I spent a lot of time on it, so if you're new to this, you should definitely read it first. Which leads to the next thing, if you have any bug reports or need help support, you can join the Discord channel in the description below. The more people use it, the better auto controller can improve, so feel free to join in. The next major update is there is a new type of program being introduced. If you remember way back in February 2021, I posted a video on using a computer to remote control your game. It's finally here. So now there will be two types of program in Auto Controller. The native program, which is the traditional program we have been using, where the microcontroller on its own runs a predetermined set of commands to do certain tasks and you have to manually stop the program, which is much more restrictive on what it can do. The new smart program, however, make use of video feedback from capture cards, meaning it can detect what is currently happening in the game. It can perform more complicated tasks and also much more reliable. In this video, I will explain the process on how to use smart programs. But in order to use smart programs, you must know how to use native program first. I will not explain how to use native program here. So again, if you're just getting started, please read the manual. There's no exception. Before you start, there are a few requirements. While the native programs are technically usable without Auto Controller Helper on Mac OS or Linux, for smart programs, those two platforms are currently not supported. You must have a Windows 10 computer. Windows 11 seems to have compatibility issue with Auto Controller Helper and other numerous applications. So if you are able to, downgrade it to Windows 10. Your computer also needs to be sufficiently powerful, at least a dual core and can process at 3 GHz or slightly lower. You need to have a regular Nintendo Switch. Switch Lite is not supported. You also need to spend at least $20 to buy extra hardware, which leads to the next part. By this point, you should already have either a Arduino Uno, Neonato, Macro, or a Teensy. The first thing you need to buy is a capture card. Capture card comes in large range of prices. In general, you should get one with USB 3.0 if it's possible and running at 720p 60fps at minimum to get the best video quality and minimize latency. There are three types of capture cards. Pass-through, which gives the highest quality for both TV and PC, but also the most expensive, ranging from $40 to even above $100. If you want to stream, these are the ones you want to get, like Elgato or Alpha Media. I used the Alpha Media LGP Lite. It was about $60 when I bought it. However, it has a USB 2.0, so there are small delays on the video output on PC, but it's still usable. Then you have the capture cards with loop out, which is cheaper than pass-throughs. It might also have latency issues, but it is a good middle ground if you still want to have both output to TV and PC at the same time. The third type are those without TV output meaning you can only play using the video display on your computer, which is heavily depending on the latency. The video quality can also vary and might cause detection problems in smart programs, but it should still be sufficient enough to be used if it uses USB 3.0. If you are getting capture cards with TV output, you probably need to buy a second HDMI cable as well. Once you bought the capture card, you are recommended to check if it works with streaming softwares like OBS first, since Auto Controller will work similarly to it. I will not go into detail on how to use OBS since there should be plenty of video tutorials on it. The next essential component is the CP2104. This is responsible to communicate between your Arduino, TNC, and computer, and should only cost a few dollars. For Arduino Uno and Neonato, you will need to buy some male-to-female jumper wires to connect it with the CP2104 chip. For Tinsy or Arduino Macro, in addition to buy female-to-female jumper wires, you will also need to buy mini grabbers. These are used to hook the pinholes without any headers soldered on it, which Tinsy and Arduino Macro usually don't have. Once you got all the hardware needed, the first thing to do is to install the smart program hex file into the board. The program is located in Artist tab in Auto Controller Helper. Compile it and install it the same way you would on native programs. 
Next, you will need to connect your board with the CP2104 chip. This is different depending on the board you have. I will go through Arduino, Uno, Neurado, and Tinsi here. If you are unsure, again, please check the manual. For Arduino, Uno, and Neonado, using the male to female jumper wires, you will need to connect the TXD pin on the CP2104 to TX1 on Arduino. RXD to RX0 and the ground pin to any ground pin on Arduino. The results should look something like what's on the screen right now. For Tinsy, using the female to female jumper wires and using the mini grabbers, connect the TXD pin to D2 on Tinsy, RXD to D3 and ground to ground. Note that the pin arrangement is different on Tinsy 2.0 and Tinsy++ 2.0. Make sure you connect the pins with the correct label. Once you connect everything, just like native programs, disconnect any controllers on your switch, then connect the Arduino or TNC to the switch. Connect the CP2104 chip to your computer, the results should look like this diagram. Now we can launch Smart Program Manager from Autocontroller Helper. Start by selecting the correct serial port. It should say it's a UART bridge, then press connect. If it fails to connect, it could be the wrong hex file installed, wrong connections with the CP2104 chip. If you still have problems, ask on Discord server. Next, select the camera device on the right side and press start camera. You should make sure there are no other applications occupying the capture card like OBS, otherwise it will not start. If there is no audio output, that means the video device name is not the same as audio. For that, you will need to download VLC player and check the names by going to your open capture device. Then you can input the names manually in Smart Program Manager. Now you should be able to control the game with keyboard. You can change the button layout by pressing on the key buttons and map the key you want. You should check whether the video output has a black border or not. If you see one, you must go to the switch settings, TV settings, adjust screen size and set it to 100%. Otherwise, you cannot start any smart program. While you are at the settings, you should also change the sleep mode settings and set the auto sleep connected to the TV to never. This will prevent the switch from turning itself off if you decided to run programs overnight. To test if everything is working correctly, we will do this by running the camera delay checker program. Go to others tab in smart program manager. Select Camera Delay Checker and press Start. This program will calibrate the delay of the video output of your capture card. It should output it in the lock window. Generally, if the delay is below 1000 milliseconds, aka 1 seconds, Smart Program should work just fine. There are program specific settings and also general settings. In general settings, you can set the dates to match your switch. This is used by programs like the Day Skipper and you must set them before running. The program instructions will remind you as well. For sounds, you can set it to play a sound effect whenever a program is finished. For stream counters, this is used by programs like Shiny Hunts. This will update a text file for encounter number and can be read by OBS for streams or recordings. And finally, you are ready to run other smart programs. You should head to section 3 in the manual and read the instructions for individual programs. Right now, I'm only implementing programs I think that are mostly used, like the Day Skipper, Wycom Glitch, and Watt Farmer, etc. If it's not been implemented, you will need to use the native program instead, like the Shiny Reggie program, etc. But if people really want them, I will try to implement the remaining native program to smart program as well. 
While I'll be focusing on making more smart programs now, I'll try to make native program versions if possible. For example, the BDSP Starter and Legendary Resets have both native and smart version, but the native versions will need constant monitoring. There will be more BDSP programs coming soon, like the X Chinese Hunt and Money Grind, so stay tuned for those. One thing I haven't mentioned is you can also make your own commands using the command sender. I will not explain how to do it here, but you can check the full details in the manual as well. That's all I have for today's update. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe for more future updates. Remember to join the Discord server. If you want to support my work, you can also donate in the description below. Have a great 2022 everyone, peace!